Okay, so this video is going to be about the pathophysiology of preeclampsia. Preeclampsia. So what happens in a normal pregnancy is different from what happens in a preeclamptic pregnancy. In a non-pregnant woman, for example, you have the spiral arteries, which are spiral, and they perfuse um, into the placental area. Um, so in a non-pregnant they're going to not be very wide or perfuse very much, whereas in a normal pregnancy, it's going to widen like this and have a lot more um, ability for perfusion to happen with this widening of the space here. In a preeclamptic pregnancy, it's going to be kind of an in-between between the non-pregnant and a normal pregnancy. So a preeclamptic pregnancy, they're going to have a little bit of a widening for more um, ability for per perfusion, but not as much as a normal pregnancy where this space has really opened up, so it increases the blood flow into the placenta, which looks like, like this. You have the placenta, and here's the baby, and the feet, and the hands, or whatever, and you have... And the spiral arteries coming in here. So you're going to want it to open up a lot to have room for that perfusion. All right, so let's erase this. So in the case of the preeclamptic, which would look, you know, somewhere between these two, like this one, um, your brain is going to perceive hypoperfusion or, you know, not as much perfusion as it would like. So your brain is going to respond by thinking that it's bleeding out. You know, usually um, when you're bleeding out, you also have a hyperperfusion. So just like if you were to break open your leg and start spewing blood, you'd also have a hyperperfusion. So you're, you're, um, in response to that, your brain is going to release vasoconstrictor hormones, um, which are going to cause that area to constrict and then redirect that blood to the vital organs, which are the heart, the, you know, the lungs, and um, also the brain. And when you're pregnant, um, your body doesn't perceive the, you know, the baby, the fetus, or the, the uterus as a vital organ. So in the same way, when there's hyperperfusion um, to there, to the, to the placenta, the, your, your brain is going to shunt that blood away to the heart, the lungs, and the brain, and away from, away from the, the uterus. Um, this this vasoconstriction, vasoconstriction is going to lead to an increase in blood pressure because we know that when the you know the arteries and the vessels whatever get smaller the pressure increases. Um, so after a while, this increase in blood pressure is going to cause wear and tear on these blood vessels. You know your blood vessels were not designed to have to withstand such elevated pressure over a long period of time. You know, it's it's okay like when you have a traumatic injury and you're trying to prevent blood loss, but over a period of nine months of pregnancy or so, having this constriction constantly is not good um, for your vessels. So what's going to happen is gonna, it's going to lead to a wear and tear of the vessels leading to these microscopic holes that are going to form on the vessels. Um, now in response to those holes that are forming in those vessels, your brain is going to um, start stimulating the production of a, a lipoprotein, a lipoprotein called um, fibronectin. Fibronectin. Now, fibronectin is um, kind of like you know how the platelets and the and the fibrin are used to like uh, clot off injuries and stuff. So the point of fibronectin is to kind of block off these holes and heal them up, but what ends up happening is that they're not able to do so, and they end up, the fibronectin ends up leaking out of the holes um, and moving from the intravascular, which intravascular means inside the vessel, into the interstitial space or the intracellular space. Like if these are the cells, the fibronectin starts leaking out into the cells. Now, why would this be a problem? Well, because one thing we know about proteins is that proteins... Uh, attract water. So wherever proteins go, um, H2O likes to follow. 
That's kind of like wherever that little Mary went that I am sure to go. Anyway, um, so all the fibronectins chilling out in the interstitial spaces. So now this protein, the fibronectin, is going to attract water. So all the water from inside the vessels are going to want to come out as well and diffuse across and start collecting in the cellular area. This is kind of getting messy. Um, which is going to cause the edema, um, which is the swelling of the, the tissues and such. Um, now, let me kind of erase this. It's kind of getting messy. Now, also, uh, dun, 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 in your kidneys, kidney, you have the kidney also has blood vessels and arteries and such. Um, these are also going to experience um, the elevated blood pressure and constriction. So they're also going to develop those holes in which the fibronectin is going to leak out into the tissue spaces into the uh, kidney, which is going to then, do you remember the loop of Henle thing? Um, they're going to, the, the fibronectin is going to leak into the loop of Henle, and then they're going to be, you know, reabsorbed and then excreted in the urine, which is why when you have um, the urine filled with, you know, those fibronectin proteins, that's going to be what we know as protein urea. Spelling. Protein urea. And um, this is actually how you diagnose um, the level of severity of preeclampsia that it is. Um, so it's measured by the number of you know protein that's in the urine, kind of tells you the severity of the preeclampsia. Um, now another thing um, with preeclampsia is sometimes mothers will complain of epigastric pain, which is I think the right upper quadrant, which is where you find the liver. I don't know what a liver looks like. Um, the liver, and the liver also is going to be experiencing this vasoconstriction just like um, the other places. So the, the liver you know, it might have epic, ep, blah, 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 epigastric pain because um, of that, the, those vasospasms of the arteries and whatnot, um, constantly squeezing and releasing of those liver arteries, um, which again is going to make the brain think that it's bleeding out. Um, so it's going to initiate the clotting cascade. So if here's like a blood vessel, um, they're going to start releasing those clotting factors because the brain thinks it's bleeding out. Um, you know, and eventually, um, all those clotting factors building up in the art and the vessels in the, in the liver, it's going to make it harder for the blood to flow through, which is going to lead to hypoxia, um, and eventually ischemia of the liver tissue which leads to necrosis. And ischemia just means a lack of blood flow or oxygen to the tissues, and then necrosis is the death of those tissues. Um, sometimes the clotting factors can even block it completely. Um, so then this is why, you know, the liver can get like these, if you were to analyze the liver of a preeclamptic pregnant, pregnant woman, she'd have like these spots of is ischemic, ischemic tissue where the points of like dead tissue but it's not really too much of a problem with the mom because the liver can regenerate it and heal it afterwards. So she, the mom doesn't usually have permanent um, lasting side effects with this unless it gets to the point where it's so bad that she dies. But that's the whole help syndrome. Um, but yeah, the dying liver will sometimes release those elevated enzymes signifying that it's dying. So that's what the LFT does. The liver function test measures those enzymes. So we kind of went over... Um, Basically, the main things that happen in preeclampsia is that elevated blood pressure, uh, the protein urea, um, and the edema. So remember, the elevated blood pressure is because um, your brain perceives that hypoperfusion, which means not enough perfusion, which makes your brain think that it is um, bleeding out. So it starts the vasoconstriction, which leads to elevated blood pressure. The elevated blood pressure causes your wear and tear on the vessels, which makes little holes, and the proteins leak out of the holes and into, you know, the Luba Henle, which leads to the protein urea, and also those proteins leaking out into the cells causes the water to follow, which led to the edema, and the liver function test measures the enzymes that are released when the liver is dying. So that is a little bit of the pathophysiology of preeclampsia. Enjoy.